Hey, I'm James, and in this video, I'm gonna be talking about how you can make money and generate revenue from your podcast. Something we all want to do, right? Well, the most common ways are sponsorship and advertising, selling other people's stuff, aka affiliate marketing, selling your own stuff, and finally, subscriptions and premium membership. Those are the things that we're gonna be covering today, so stay right there. So if you're new to this channel, my name is James Mulvaney and I've been working with podcasters, broadcasters, all shapes and sizes for the past 15 years, helping them get results. If you're interested in content like this, I'm pushing videos out every single Friday. So remember to hit that subscribe button and turn on your notifications so you'll be notified whenever I push out new content. And if you enjoy this video today, I'd appreciate a little bit of a thumbs up and also a comment below would be great as well. So without further ado, let's dive in. Okay, so firstly, the main question I get asked a lot is, you know, how many listeners do I actually need on my podcast before I can start running adverts? Now, there's no golden rule as to the exact number. However, most advertising networks that supply the kind of 30 second spot adverts you might be hearing, the kind of ones that sound automated, they sound like what you'd imagine traditional radio advertising might sound like, they'll want you to be getting about five to 10,000 downloads per episode on your podcast before they'll speak to you. And not only that, uh, a lot of these ad networks then generally don't pay very high because they're focusing on quantity. So you might only be getting, say, between five and $10 per CPM, which is a fancy ad term, which stands for cost per milli, and it just simply means per 1,000 impressions or plays of that advert. Okay, so let's say you've got a 10,000 download podcast, you're getting $5 CPM, that means you might be making between 50 and $150 per podcast. Let's say you've got $50, so if that's just saying that you're playing one at the beginning, but let's say you have a middle and an end advert as well, so you might be getting between $50 and $150, depending on how many of those adverts you've served up. Not always the best way of advertising. The next step up is to use a service like AdvertiseCast that kind of hooks up more, um, I suppose, independent advertisers who are looking to broker deals a bit more directly with the sponsors, so these adverts aren't as automated. You'll actually need to do what is known as a live read, which is when you, the host, reads that advert out. So it might be something like Squarespace or Wix.com seem to be quite common. If you're looking at a fancy way of building a website for your business, go and check out Wix.com or uh, Squarespace. You know, they, they tend to hammer these uh, website builders on podcasts. I've really no idea why. I guess they can figure out it just works. But you know, it's actually the host reading the advert out. In that case, by doing a live read, you might get between a sort of 18 to $25 per CPM, depending on the length of the advert and you know the amount of downloads you're getting. But it's a little bit more realistic and you can make some more money if you're doing a live read. The other cool thing about live reads is they've been kind of proven to be more effective as adverts than the kind of annoying 30 second spot ads. So it's something you might want to consider as using a service like Advertise Cast to go and broker them. The next way to go and find sponsorship is to actually go and broker a deal directly yourself. Now there's a few different steps to that. Firstly is put together a solid pitch. Create a deck or um, you know like a one pager or a two pager which basically covers off you know what your podcast's about, what you're about, the sort of listeners that are tuning into your podcast. Um, if you can demonstrate some statistics it's always good you know show me how many people are downloading the episode, if you can show how many people are subscribed to your newsletter perhaps, your website traffic. Really you want to be selling the whole package of your brand rather than just saying you know oh, I will play you on a podcast or we'll give you a mention now and then. You know it needs to be you're going to get all of this exposure and here's the sort of audience that we're attracting on a regular basis and if you can prove that audience is coming back again and again if you can prove the demographic you know are they male female what's the age range whereabouts are they based could be important if you're running local advertising sometimes you can then go you can find a company who wants to sponsor your entire podcast now this can be great because you can sometimes attract a fixed rate sponsorship which might mean they pay uh, for the number of downloads or it could be they even agree on a monthly fixed rate sponsorship for say six months and they want to pay you say two thousand dollars a month. Now there are lots of podcasts we've seen who have done this very very successfully and actually the CPM is much much higher than they'd be getting if they were relying on an advertising network. It's all about finding the right fit for the sponsor for your podcast. There's no point if your um, audience is people who are you know interested in uh, health and fitness of pairing up with some kind of technology company. You want to go and find a really relevant health or fitness company 
uh, to advertise and sponsor your podcast because you know everyone who's listening to your podcast is going to be really interested in that company and they'll get some really good results in the adverts. And ultimately, you know, your job as a podcast host is to be selling their products or services as part of your podcast. That's how you're going to be uh, making money if you want to go down this route. So the next way to monetize your podcast is to sell other people's products and services. Uh, when I say that, I mean things like affiliate marketing. Now affiliate marketing is really simple. It's been around for like 20, 25 years, really since the birth of the commercial internet. And the, the promise is simple, you know, you send traffic to a website and anyone who buys a product or service on that website will obviously pay a fee for it and you will take a percentage cut of what that fee is. Now the great thing about affiliate marketing, particularly if you can sell digital products and services, is sometimes the commissions can be really high. So you might be getting as much as 50 or even 75% of the cost of that product. So let's say you've got a podcast which is focused on SEO, search engine optimization. You know everyone listening to your podcast is gonna be really interested in that topic. Now what you've gotta do is go and find websites that offer an affiliate commission. So it might be software as a service products. So it could be things like moz.com for example in the SEO world, or it might be going to something like JVZoo and ClickBank and finding some digital products, whether that be the latest SEO guide in a PDF manual or a course or a video course or something like this, where they will pay a high percentage of that commission to you. In your podcast, you then recommend that product, that service, and you should really only recommend products or services that you've kind of tried or, tried or tested, or at least have some idea that they're gonna deliver genuine value to your audience, because otherwise, if people are purchasing stuff on your recommendation and they find it's a no good, it's gonna kind of put you in a bit of an awkward position. So make sure the thing that you're promoting you genuinely believe in. But that's simply one of the oldest and easiest ways to kind of make money on the internet. But all you're doing is just diverting that traffic from your podcast, like in audio form, onto a sales page or you know into a certain product or solution or platform and then sort of taking a commission. Some of the products will even offer a recurring commission. So if someone signs up, you'll get paid each and every single month for the lifetime that the user is, is actually on that product or that platform. So think about what sort of products or services you might wanna recommend based on the contents of your podcast. And this works tremendously well with podcasts that have got a very focused audience. They know exactly what their audience is interested in um, and they can therefore recommend products or services which fit the description or that profile of that audience. So next up is selling your own products and services. Now a podcast doesn't necessarily have to be a tool to generate revenue in such a kind of an obvious way as spamming people with adverts. There we know lots and lots of businesses who have their own podcasts as a tool to generate traffic for their website. So for example, on our podcast.co platform, we have a podcast called Meet the Podcasters, where we simply interview podcasters about their their successes and their achievements and find out more about you know how they have succeeded in the podcasting world. This works really well because of course anyone listening to that podcast has that invested interest in podcasting and we can use that then to funnel people onto our website podcast.co which is a podcasting platform. It makes it really easy to um, inject advertising by the way at the beginning and end of every podcast. Uh, you know you can replace ads and all that sort of stuff without going off on too much of a tangent and selling my own wares here, um, you know, this is a fantastic way to actually generate traffic and build leads for our business because the topic of the podcast is around the nature of the business that we're in. Now that could be applied to any business. You know, we've seen it work really well with um, legal firms, for example. We've seen it work for uh, recruitment advisors. We've seen it work very well for marketing agencies. It really doesn't matter what industry you're in or how specific of an industry you're in. The whole point of generating leads for your business is by pushing out content interest to your audience. Now we've been doing this for years, you know, we create video content, we create audio content, we create written content. It's just an extension of your content strategy. Podcasting doesn't necessarily have to be selling other people's products or services or running out other people's adverts. It can be effectively running your own adverts and driving traffic into your own funnel. So have a think about that. Some other ideas of products that you might wanna to sell to your audience are things like coaching, consulting, creating courses, digital courses that are relevant for them. Another thing you might want to consider selling is merchandise. Now merchandise is really popular and I think it's had this huge resurgence over the past couple of years. We see lots of podcasters selling merchandise really successfully. It doesn't have to necessarily be as obvious as like you're sticking your logo on a t-shirt or you're sticking your logo on a hoodie or on a mug. It can be more interesting than that. Think about who your audience is and the 
kinds of content or the kinds of slogans or sort of comical things that they might actually want to have be wearing on a t-shirt. Don't just assume that they want to wear a t-shirt with a huge logo on. Unless it's like Nike or Adidas or Levi's or something, you're probably not going to get very far, right? So try and think intelligently about what sorts of merchandise they might actually want to buy it and try and bring it to life with some cool designs. Even go out and hire a designer to create some awesome products for you. All right, so my final method of monetization for podcasters is um, premium content and subscriptions. Now you can use services like PayPal to accept donations, or you can use services like Patreon, which make it really easy to accept recurring payments from people. And in fact, if you go on patreon.com, and type in podcast, you'll see there are literally hundreds and hundreds of podcasts. Some have thousands, some have tens of thousands of subscribers who are paying like micro continuity amounts. So I'm talking like between say one, two, five or $10 a month. And in return, they are getting access to content that they can't get for free. It's not available to the rest of the podcast listeners. Now, if you think about it, if you've got like 2000 people paying $5 a month, you're making some serious revenue there. So suddenly your podcast turns into something that's uh, from a hobby into like a serious business. And you can use that money to reinvest and run advertising and sort of push up those subscriber numbers uh, and get more traction on your actual podcast itself, which is great. But even if you were to get say, 200 people make paying say $5 a month, you're suddenly bringing $1,000 a month. Pretty sweet deal, you know? It's worth thinking about this as a business model and it works for a lot of podcasters that we've seen. Um, and as I say, if you go on patreon.com, this information is all public. You can go and see exactly what sorts of services or what sorts of premium content people are offering in return for a few dollars a month. I think the key thing to remember here is yes, these numbers are huge when you can kind of get them to that level, but for the consumer on the end, paying $2 a month to support their favorite podcast isn't a big deal, or $5 a month. Yeah, sure, maybe if you're charging 10, 20, $30 a month, suddenly people are like, oh, see that with my credit card statement, I might cancel that. If you can make it low enough that people really don't care, quite often they'll continue paying that subscription almost forever and ever, certainly for a couple of years sometimes. So when it comes to creating premium content, you might want to create episodes that aren't made available to the, everyone else, e.g. you can't listen to them for free. You might wanna be previewing episodes before everyone else gets access to them. And we've even seen some podcasters that have every other episode, which is released to the, the, the public, and every other episode gets released to the subscribers. So if you wanna get access to every single episode, you really need to subscribe. And it's a great way of teasing the content and showing them what kind of quality content you're creating whilst giving away something for free, but then also giving people an incentive or a reason to actually subscribe. Other things you could do, you know, Q and A's where you're actually answering people's questions. This works particularly well, perhaps if you're providing some kind of consultancy or coaching services, if people are getting access to you directly and they can ask you questions and you can answer them, um, it's a great way to get people to actually pay for a subscription. Another thing is just actually removing adverts. You know, there's a reason companies like Disney have launched services like Disney Plus because people will pay for access to content without advertising in between. So if they can digest that full episode without any adverts, without any promotion, quite often people will pay a premium to get access to that. Okay, so that concludes the four main ways that we see people making money or generating revenue from their podcasts. Simple. Yes, um, however, there is no magic formula here. I think a lot of people assume that there's some sort of secret source behind making millions of dollars from your podcast. Of course, it's gonna take hard work. Of course, you need an audience, and of course, you need to understand who that audience is. Those things are crucial. You need to make sure you're pushing out content regularly and also making good quality content as well. Really, that's the first thing you need to be doing when you're thinking about launching your podcast is actually how to go out and attract that audience, build a good podcast that people wanna to listen to, and you know get listeners because all Ultimately, there are now over 1 million podcasts available on Apple. And, um, you know, there's a lot of competition out there just to get listeners, let alone just to start making money from podcasts. Having said that, there's nothing to stop you from monetizing your podcast from the get-go, perhaps running, uh, you know, affiliate promotions or starting to build a small subscriber base who are actually paying money to access premium content. You know, you could do that with zero listeners. You could build that stuff in from the get-go. So it's something to think about if you're thinking about launching a podcast, but if you wanna sort of attract advertisers and sponsors, yes, you probably do need some, some serious numbers before they'll consider you. As I mentioned earlier, not always. There are some exceptions to the rule. 
And you know, again, we see most podcasters using a combination of these techniques to monetize their podcast. Just because you don't want to run adverts doesn't mean that you know you can't perhaps be sort of getting affiliate promotions in, you know, recommending product services within that podcast itself. And just because you are running adverts doesn't mean you can't be selling merchandise. So you know, think about using a combination of these things to actually start making some money from your podcast. Okay, so let's wrap up by saying if you have any comments or questions or ideas of how to make money using podcasting that perhaps I haven't mentioned in this video, please put them in the comments below. Uh, and if you're interested in starting your own podcast, check this out. Hey, wait, before you go, perhaps you're looking to start a podcast for your business. And did you know that most businesses make the same exact mistakes? Whenever we work with clients who are struggling to get their podcast off the ground or they're not getting the traction that they deserve, it turns out that most of the time they're making the same mistakes. So what I've done is I've compiled a guide, which is called the five step business podcast checklist, which will show you exactly what you need to know to get your podcast up and running without making the same mistakes that most other people do. So you can download it for free at jamesm.com slash podcast. That's jamesm.com slash podcast. Go and grab your copy today.